I've begun removing the circuit board from this uh, sheet metal enclosure. Uh, taking the fans loose front and rear. And now I've decided the best thing to do is begin disconnecting things on this terminal strip here. This terminal strip, and there's seven pairs of connectors. And they're all um, oriented the same way, red, black, red, black, red, black. The first two are thermal devices that accounts for two of the seven. Uh, this one, which is vacant at the, at the moment, is a front panel mounted LED. And these four are fans. One of the problems getting these things off is this white thermal compound right here for example it's not really thermal compound it's I don't believe it is it's more of a goop that is hardened and it's very difficult to remove I have removed it for example completely down here but up here it spans and is on the components. See, it's back here on the electrolytic capacitors. And so, what I have to do almost is bend it away, that is, bend the connector away until it breaks free of the elastic, maybe, I don't know what you call it, which almost bends the pins on it connector. In fact, it did bend the pins on this connector. But that allows me to set the fans away. If I don't put any load, I think I can power this thing up without fans. And I'm going to try to remove this stuff as best I can. And of course, I'll make a drawing of this Unless I find a numbering system, I'm just going to arbitrarily number these jacks. And I'll provide functions for all the wires. There we go. Still fastened to the components, but at least it's not fastening itself to the jack anymore. This is what I said in part one, not thermal paste. Uh, I've got to revise that. There was a wire, I believe it was one of the fan wires, laid across here like that. And I dislodged it when I took the fans out. But it looks like there is a thermal device right here. I think it's green. And I believe there's two black wires just sort of attached to it. So that device was encapsulated except where the wire was. So I probably threw the calibration off. So here's the board. You can see that clearly identified. This is line voltage this is the far side of the transformers. Uh, there's little holes drilled at each transformer, but I don't know what they're for because they're covered with the the transformers mounted so close that there could be no airflow. And it looks like all the feedback is here, which are a pair of opto isolators. I don't see anything digital about this board. Assuming it's all analog and has remote sensing abilities, there should be some pins. And here are the pin array. You can see the center of the pin array is clearly divided by a ground plane. And four of the pins are actually grounded. 
actually connected to that ground. Here's a close-up. There are four rows of pins with uh, five pins in each row, each column. These are clearly ground pins. And there's one little tiny ground trace tracing to this pin, so it's included in the grounds. Doesn't look like any of the other pins are grounded. So we can see here these two pins are connected together. And according to my notes, these two are the 5 volt utility output source. So this is the rear of the board here, back here. It's turned upside down. So these three pins here here and here are the potentiometer that seems to control the 12 volts. If I measure across the uh, potentiometer of course I'm in circuit so I mean that I get 148 ohms could be a 150 ohm potentiometer. And on this trace, we come over to what might be a voltage divider, but who knows. I was hoping I could identify maybe a resistor uh, in series with one leg or the other, so I could shift the whole thing up or down electrically. But I don't, I'm not seeing it. It was an interesting exercise to get this out of the enclosure, but it looks like I'm not going to learn much. I made connections to this uh, matrix of pins here with some DuPont connectors, and I put uh, an LED power resistor and, and some voltmeter attachments. And I've probe with, with a DuPont connector, uh, male to female, the various pins. And I've made notes on what I found. I'll put them all into some sort of readable form, probably a PDF. And I'll upload it to a subdirectory on my uh, website with a link below the description. So this thing can reliably provide about 30 amps, maybe more, at 13 volts. I'm going to button it up and set it aside until I decide what to do with it. I'm going to do one more server power supply, uh, a different kind, different model. So that'll be next in the series. So if you enjoy this, you need to, you need to know anything about server power supplies. Uh, come back to the next video. Thank you.